Good evening, parents. Thank you for joining us this evening for our Literacy Night. Our reading teachers have joined together to record a virtual literacy event. They will cover a variety of topics. In order to make the event more accessible to you, it will be made available on our website from October 14th to October 21st. At the end of the event, you will have the opportunity to complete an exit ticket. Respond to the answers and submit for your child to earn a free book of their choosing from our Title I library. We hope our presentation gives you a chance to learn all that goes on in the intensive reading classroom. Thank you to our reading teachers, Ms. Oliva, Ms. Peters, Mr. Watson, and Ms. Wenzel, as well as our reading coach, Mr. Bruin, for putting on tonight's event. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Dr. Cora, and thank you for joining us tonight to learn about the literacy programs we have at Millwee to support your student. Tonight we will share some information about the curriculum of our intensive reading classes and the tools we have to help monitor and support your student as they develop their reading skills. Our intensive reading program includes two levels of instruction. For our striving readers, readers we offer a foundations class that focuses on the fundamental skills needed to become a proficient reader. We work on phonics, word identification and pronunciation, and developing the student's awareness of word parts, including Latin and Greek roots. For students who are ready to focus on reading fluency and comprehension, we offer a class with three modes of instruction. We use iReady for diagnostics and instruction, novel studies, and grade level scaffolded instruction using informational text from Scope Magazine. I'll hand it off to Ms. Peters now, who will discuss the importance of depth of knowledge and the interactive novel studies that we provide. Hello, my name is Trish Peters. I teach grades six, seven, and eight grade. Reading comprehension is all about the vocabulary and thinking about what the words mean together, AKA comprehension. When students are to respond to a text, there are levels of questions. We call these levels depth of knowledge or the DOK. The DOK in a way can be compared to a pool. Shallow waters, not deep at all, are extremely easy to encounter. The same is true for DOK level one questions. These questions are on the surface, questions that can be found right in the text, questions that answer who, where, and when. Students that have strong foundational skills in phonics find these questions very easy. DOK level two questions are a bit deeper. Deep waters require more thinking. They require more thought and some digging to figure out the answers. Often, DOK Level 2 questions have to do with vocabulary in context. Figuring out what words mean. Questions like what are often used with this level. In our reading classes, the hardest level of questions are DOK Level 3. These questions are like the deep end of the pool. Skills are needed to stay afloat. These questions are about taking background knowledge, information from the text, and then drawing an informed conclusion. These are called inferencing skills. Questions such as why, how, and what are often used, are often the focus of these questions. I'd like to show you a sample passage. Uh, this is called, I live in a refugee camp. And if you skip down with me uh, to the second to last sentence, uh, there's the word, a highlighted vocabulary word, famine. And not only is it important for the kids to try to figure out what the word famine means, but it's connected to the central idea and just understanding what the whole, um, the whole text is about. When a student reads a text, it is important for them to stop and to use context, cl context clues to figure out the important vocabulary words. So, um, I'm going to read the first sentence, or that sentence with the word famine. It says, maybe you live in a region plagued with famine and you are facing starvation. So the kids read that in the text and then they go to the question. If you look at the second question down, you can see uh, we have labeled a lot of our questions when we're reading our novels and when we're reading in small groups. So the kids would look at it, they would say, okay, this is a level two DOK to clarify, which is another word for vocabulary. So they would read the question, and it says, which context clue words from the text help you to know the word famine means a long period of time without food? 
So the question actually gave them the answer. They have to go back and see which word helped them figure that out, which is a little bit of a higher level for them to think about. So when they look at the sentence, they would see their answer choices are region, starvation, live, and facing. And of course, starvation would be a long period of time without food, so the context clue word is right there for them. This is a skill that the kids work on and we practice, and it really helps the kids to know the levels of questioning when answering questions. Students work on the levels of the DOKs when we're working on our novel study, and also when we have our small group instruction. All right, again, I'm Ms. Peters, and I would like to pass the uh, information session to Mr. Watson. Mr. Watson? Hi, friends and students. My name is Mr. Watson. I'm a seventh grade intensive reading teacher, and I will be talking about the I-Ready Diagnostic. The I-Ready Diagnostic is an assessment that is designed to provide insight into students' needs and deficiencies. The diagnostic results also set a personalized learning path for each student, ensuring they are working on instruction that matches their unique learning needs. The I-Ready Diagnostic provides detailed information on student performance by domain, clear instruction, instructional recommendations, including a personalized instructional path and accumulated data for spotting trends across groups of students. The three major domains that we focus on for reading is vocabulary, comprehension literature, which is fiction, and comprehension informational types, which is nonfiction. I already grow Measure, I already wrote measures provide a detailed portrait of students' growth on each domain and chart a path to grade level proficiency for every student. To ensure that students are accountable for their own progress on iReady, we provide students with an iReady diagnostic tracking sheet. The tracking sheet provides the student with a scale where they can highlight where they started, their goal, for the end of the school year and their progress to achieving that goal. The tracking sheet also gives students pointers and steps on strategies and how to achieve that goal. And now, here is Ms. Oliva. Ms. Oliva will touch on our reading lesson plan. Hi, my name is Ms. Oliva. I teach sixth grade intensive reading. Students' domain progress is monitored within the iReady lesson plan to adjust the grade level students are working on as they're making gains throughout their iReady lessons. Within their iReady check-in, students can monitor their minutes worked on within iReady lessons and iReady lessons past and their reading lesson streak. School goal is 45 minutes per week, 67% or higher on lessons, even though it says 75% on the PowerPoint. Within the iReady check-in, students can see and monitor iReady reading lessons grade received on each lesson students have completed. Um, here is Ms. Wenzel on immersive reading. Hi, my name is Laura Wenzel and I teach 8th grade reading. I'm going to talk about a little underused, underutilized tool that we have available on eCampus and on most of the Microsoft products. It's called Immersive Reader. It helps the students by understanding and reading the printed material that teachers use, and it reads the material, it can read the material to them, or it can translate the material, or it can define the words. If you navigate to your child's eCampus page, or have your child do so, and open up any teacher page, we can get started. I'm going to use mine, for example. I click on my page, and I open up in the weekly agenda. This is slide one. Here's my agenda for the week. In the upper right hand corner is the Immersive Reader logo. Click on that logo. For the next slide, here's my learning goal as written on my agenda in bigger size. If you look down to the little green button at the bottom of the middle of the page, click on that button and that will give you the text being read aloud. In the next slide, you can make the font even bigger by clicking on the double A's in the upper right hand corner. As you can see, you can change the font itself, increase the spacing, and even change the background 
color by using the section called themes. Also, clicking on the book in the corner, this gives you access to translation. Immersive reading has over 74 languages. I know because I counted them. Which helps parents as well when they are trying to help their, aid their child with homework if English is not the first language. There are even more things that immersive reader can do and should your child need help, I would be more than happy to help them as is any of our reading teachers. They can stop by my classroom any morning to email me or email me and set up a time to come by and I will show them how to work immersive reader and help them learn how to use their eCampus a little better. And now Mr. Bruin. Thank you, Mrs. Wenzel. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation. As Ms. Wenzel said, if you have any questions about our reading program, please reach out to our reading team or to myself. Finally, we would greatly appreciate it if you would take a moment to complete the exit ticket linked below the video. Every student that has a parent complete the exit ticket will receive a book from our Title I library. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to working with you in the weeks and months to come.